we're going to learn how to use the Chinese remainder theorem to solve a system of linear congruences. So first I want, to, want you to pause the video and take a few minutes to read the theorem carefully and then we'll talk about what this all means. Okay, so we're interested in solving a system of linear congruences like we have here. In order to use the Chinese remainder theorem, we have to ensure that our mods are pairwise relatively prime integers and the values of a1, a2, all the way down to ak can be any integers. If we have those conditions, then we know that there's a unique solution to that system. And that solution is x, where x is given by this formula. So in order to solve the system, we need to find the values of ai, mi, and yi, i going from 1 to k. So the values of a1, a2, all the way down to ak are easy to find because those come from the original congruences. In order to find the values of m, uh, first we need to find the value of m, which is n1 times n2 all the way down to nk, the product of all of the mods. And then mi is given by m divided by ni. So for example, if we want to find m3, we would take m, the product of all of the mods, and divide by n3, the third mod. Lastly, we need to find the values of the y. In order to do that, the mi's are the inverses of the yi's mod ni. So we have a series of congruences that we need to solve. mi times yi congruent to 1 mod ni for i going from 1 to k. So let's take a look at some examples and see what this all means. Example 1. So we're going to use the Chinese remainder theorem to solve this system of linear congruences. The first thing we want to do is make sure that we can in fact use the Chinese remainder theorem as stated and in fact the mods are pairwise relatively prime. So we're all set. I made a table of values for you so it's easy to um, fill in all the numbers that we need to find the solution. The first thing we're going to do is find the a's, a1, a2, and a3, and those are just the values from the original congruences. So a1 is 1, a2 is 2, and a3 is 3. So I've filled those values in for you. The next thing we want to do is find m and m is going to be the product of the mods, 5 times 6 times 7, which is 210, and we'll fill that value in. m1 is going to be m divided by 5, n1, or 6 times 7, because the 5's cancel, and we get 42. Similarly, m2 is going to be 210 divided by n2, which is 6, so that comes out to be 5 times 7, or 35. And m3 is 6 times 7, excuse me, 5 times 6, or 30. So we'll fill those values in. So the last set of values that we need to find are y1, y2, and y3. And remember, y1 is the inverse of m1 mod n1. So I want m1 times y1 congruent to 1 mod 5, and then I'm going to solve for y1. Similarly, m2 times y2 is going to be congruent to 1 mod 6, and I'm going to si solve that congruence. Okay, so I want m1 of 42 times y1 to be congruent to 1 mod n1, which is 5. Okay, so first thing I want to do is reduce 42 mod 5. So if I divide 42 by 5, the remainder is 2. So 42 and 2 are congruent mod 5. So I get 2y1 congruent to 1 mod 5. Okay, so to solve for y1, we need to get rid of this 2 here. And what we need to do is find the inverse of 2 mod 5. I know 1 is congruent to 6 mod 5. So what I'd like to do is get a 6 here, since it's the same as 1. So I'm going to multiply by 3 on both sides. And I get 6y1 is congruent to 3 mod 5. 
and the 6 reduces to 1, so I just get y1 is congruent to 3 mod 5. So I filled that value in the table. Similarly, I want to do the same thing. I want m2 to be congruent to y2, m2 times y2 to be congruent to 1 mod n2. So I need 35y2 congruent to 1 mod 6, and we're going to solve that congruent. So I want 35y2 congruent to 1 mod 6, right? Mod n2. So 35, we want to reduce that mod 6. Well, 6 goes into 30 with 5 remainder, or 35 with 5 remainder. So we get 5y2 congruent to 1 mod 6. And remember, 5 1 less than 6. 5 is the same thing as negative 1 mod 6, so it's its own inverse. So if I multiply both sides of this equation by 5, I will find the solution I want. So I got 25y2 is congruent to 5 mod 6, and 25, we want to reduce 25 mod 6, so if I divide 25 by 6, I get a remainder of 1. So that coefficient simplifies to 1, y2, congruent to 5, mod 6. So we've got y2 is 5. Okay, one more. We've got to solve for y3. So we're going to want 30, y3 is congruent to 1, because we're finding the inverse, mod 7. Okay, so let's write that congruence down. We want 30, sorry about that, 30, y3 congruent to 1 mod 7. Okay, so again we're going to reduce. 7 goes into 30 4 times with a remainder of 2, so that reduces to 2y3 congruent to 1 mod 7. We want to find the inverse of 2 mod 7, so we know that 1 is congruent to 8 mod 7. So if I had an 8 here, I wouldn't be golden. So I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides. And I get 8y3 congruent to 4 mod 7. And 8 reduces to 1, so y3 is 4 mod 7. And we fill that value in. OK, so let's remind ourselves now what the solution to this system looks like. And x is going to be congruent to a1 m1 y1 plus a2 m2 y2 plus a3 m3 y3 mod big M. Okay, so I want a1 times m1 times y1. I want a2 times m2 times y2. And I want a3 times m3 times y3. So what I'm going to do is just multiply across the row of this table that I made and put the values here. So that's 126, that's 1, times 42 times 3, 2 times 35 times 5, I get 350. And the last one, 3 times 30 times 4, I get 360. And I want to add all those values up, and I get 836. So my solution is going to be 836 mod m, 210, okay? I want to reduce that, so 210 goes 800 into 836 three times with a remainder of 206 mod 210. Okay, so there's my solution. I want to check the answer. So let's, let's look at the original system, okay? We've got x congruent to 1 mod 5. So if I take 206 and divide by 5, what's the remainder? 1, right? Because 5 goes into 205. So that equation, or that congruence, is satisfied. Okay, let's try the next one. And in fact, if you take 206 and divide by 6, the remainder is going to be 2. And finally, you can check 206. If I divide it by 7, the remainder is 3. So I know I found the solution.
So now that we've done one example, I'm going to go th through this one a little bit more quickly. But feel free to pause the video at any time. And if you want to try to work this problem completely through before watching the solution, pause and please do that. So the first thing we want to find the values of are for A1, A2, and A3. The values of A1, A2, A3 come from the original congruences. A1 is 3, A2 is 6, A3 is 4. Next we're going to calculate the value of m. And m is the product of the three mods, 5 times 7 and times 11, or 385. So we filled that value in. Then we're going to go on to calculate the values of m1, m2, and m3. m1 is 7 times 11, or 77. m2 is 5 times 11, or 55. And m3 is 5 times 7, or 35. So we filled those values in the table. To calculate the value of y1, we've got to find the solution to the congruence 77y1 is congruent to 1 mod 5. First thing we're going to do is reduce the 77, mod 5. So we have 2y1 is congruent to 1, mod 5. Then we've got to figure out the inverse of 2, mod 5, and multiply both sides of the congruence by that. And 2 times 3 is 6, which is congruent to 1, mod 5. So we're going to multiply both sides of that congruence by... So we get 6y1 is congruent to 3, or y1 is congruent to 3 mod 5. And we filled that value into the table. So to find the value of y2, we need to solve the congruence 55y2 is congruent to 1 mod 7. And the first thing we're going to do again is to reduce 55 mod 7. So 7 goes into 49, and the remainder is 6. So that reduces to 6y2. And we know 6, since it's 7 minus 1, is its own inverse, so I'm going to multiply both sides of that congruence by 6. And when we reduce, we get y2 is congruent to 6, so we've filled that value into the table. Lastly, to find the value of y3, we need to solve the congruence 35y3 is congruent to 1 mod 11. We're going to reduce 35 mod 11, and since 11 goes into 35, goes into 33 with 2 remainder, we get 2y3 is congruent to 1. Then we find the inverse of 2 mod 11, which is 6. 2 times 6 is 12, which is congruent to 1. So we're going to multiply both sides of the congruence by 6, and when we reduce, we get y3 is 6, and we filled that value into the table. So now we're ready to plug into the formula for x. So x is a1, m1, y1, plus a2, m2, y2, etc. So I've filled in and added another column to this table and filled in, just multiplying across the row, a1, m1, y1, 693, etc. And then I've totaled those values. So 35, 15, 35, 13 is the value of x. 3513 is the value of x. When we reduce that mod 385, we get 48. Remember, we can always check our solution in the original system. If I take 48 and divide by 5, the remainder is, in fact, 3. If I take 48 and divide by 7, right, 7 goes into 42, remove the remainder 6, and 7 goes into f 11, goes into 48, with a remainder of 4. So 48 does satisfy the system. One last example. We're going to use the Chinese remainder theorem to solve this linear congruence. You can see the numbers are quite a bit larger, and it could take us a long time to do this calculation by hand. So we're going to tap into the power of Mathematica to solve this system. So in Mathematica, I've opened Mathematica and I have a notebook here. The command is Chinese remainder. Remember from pre previous lessons that Mathematica is pretty picky about capitalization. The C and the R are capitalized. And then we put the values of the A's in curly brackets, and then a list of the mods. And we're ready to go and find the solution. And there is the solution. 
And if we want to check our solution, as we did in the previous examples, we're going to take the solution and evaluate it, mod n1, n2, and n3, and see what we get. And in fact, everything works out. These are the original values of A. So we have the solution.